Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. I am having a heck of a time trying to figure out what to call this video because it is a video on mainly skincare and a little bit of makeup. And I'm gonna talk about things that are new and things that are discontinued and what I'm trying to replace them with or what I'm thinking about replacing them with or how their replacement is. And uh, I don't really know what to call this one. So the only thing that I can think of in my brain that keeps rolling around there is something old, something new, something discontinued, and I'm blue. <laughs> I'm blue because my favorite cleanser has been discontinued. One of my holy grail sunscreens has been discontinued. Oh my God, companies, why do you do this to us? Is there a reason that we need to reformulate something that is perfect already? or that we need to discontinue something that's perfect already? Does it bug you as much as it bugs me? Does it send you into like a tailspin of trying to find something new? And I know a lot of you guys depend on me to find the, the new thing, so I, I feel double the pressure. So let me hear from you in the comments. How do you feel about it when Companies discontinue your favorite products. What are your favorites that have been discontinued? What are the products that you wish to this day would come back? And um, what's your take on why they feel the need to reformulate products that we love? And I also have a couple of new product launches to share with you as well that I am pretty psyched about. All right, let's start in with the discontinued product that is really breaking my heart. <laughs> And I don't know if I'm gonna find anything that can really rival this product, but I will certainly try. And it is my Elta MD UV Elements SPF 44 sunscreen. This is a tinted mineral sunscreen. It uses only zinc oxide and titanium dioxide as the sunscreens in there. It doesn't contain any chemical sunscreen boosters that are technically not sunscreens, but not minerals either. So a lot of the mineral sunscreens are putting them in to boost the SPF, but then can you still call it an all mineral sunscreen? It's a fine line, it's a bit of a hazy area, but that's the way it's going. And unfortunately, that is the way it looks like this sunscreen is going because the new version of it is called Elta MD UV AOX Elements and it's now an SPF 50, and it does contain the sunscreen booster butyloctyl salicylate. And so that helped it to get from an SPF of 44 up to an SPF of 50. The concentrations of titanium dioxide and zinc oxide in these are slightly different. In the original, the titanium dioxide is 5.5%. In the new one, it's 4.4%. In the original, the zinc oxide was 10%. And in the new one, the zinc oxide is 13.5%. So a little bit higher on the zinc, which is always good. And then the new one, of course, has the butyloctyl salicylate. These are both still tinted sunscreens. The tint is slightly different though. In the new one, it's slightly warmer and slightly darker. I'm wearing it today. It's the main makeup that I have on today. I really don't have any foundation on over it. It's just this. And I have this on my neck. So you can kind of see the difference between what these two look like. I feel like this one was just a little bit lighter, a little bit maybe cooler, pinkier. This one is just a little bit darker a little bit deeper, a little bit warmer. This is the new shade, the AOX. This is the original shade, the Elements. Another difference that I notice is that the original one is 40 minutes water resistant and the new AOX version does not mention being water resistant at all. So this is not a good choice to wear to the beach where this was always one of my beach go-tos. So I'm currently testing mineral sunscreens for my annual mineral sunscreen testing video. And I tested this one a couple of days ago. And the good news about this one is that it feels looks and acts very much like the original formula. This one feels very lightweight on the skin. It doesn't feel super greasy. It leaves a nice glowy, dewy finish. The new version actually wore under makeup better than the old version does for me because this one always shortened the wear time of my foundation. And with this one, my foundation lasted a good eight hours solid with no wearing off, no settling in wrinkles. I really like it a lot. The main reason that I'm not super happy with it is that the butyloctyl salicylate tends to irritate my skin. And so I can't really use sunscreens with 
butyloctyl salicylate on my neck. If you're not familiar with my neck issues, it is constantly irritated. My hair irritates it, clothes irritate it, skin care irritates it. Butyloctyl salicylate irritates it as well. Depending on how much butyloctyl salicylate is in a sunscreen, it sometimes irritates my eyelids and makes the rest of my skin sting. With this sunscreen, I don't think it's super high on the ingredient list. You know, some of them it's like second ingredient after water. This one hasn't irritated my eyelids or my face, but I haven't used it on my neck yet. So this is pretty good in my opinion. And I think that, you know, if you're switching over that you could be perfectly happy with the new version. Another discontinued product is my Derma E Sensitive Skin Cleanser. It's not appearing on the Derma E website anymore on the shopping page of the cleansers. This is my last bottle and I only have this much left in it. So I'm going to be out of this pretty soon. I did go on vacation recently and I forgot to bring it. So I just walked into a drugstore and looked for a new cleanser and I found this one from Neutrogena. This is a new product in their line and I really, really like this one. It's the Hydro Boost Soothing Milk cleanser and it's fragrance free. And I love the ingredient deck on this one. This one is going to be especially good for people with dry skin because it's packed with oils. And I think it'll probably be more effective at getting off some of your makeup because, you know, oil really is good at breaking up makeup, especially waterproof, you know, mascara, foundations. It's got sunflower seed oil, castor oil, and avocado oil. And it also contains glycerin and hyaluronic acid, which are both humectants that draw water to the skin and help to bind water to the skin. I've used it for a couple of weeks now and it's so hydrating and so soothing on the skin. I really love this as a replacement for this. So that's a good one. Then I went ahead and looked on the Derma E website to see if they made a cleanser that was similar to this. And they have probably five or six different cleansers. Most of them are using the coconut derived cleansers and I don't really love those. They tend to strip my skin. They tend to be a little bit drying on my skin, but I did find a cleanser that they still do have that has very similar ingredients to this one. And that is the Derma E Pure Biome Balancing Cleanser. Now this one, if you look at the ingredients, they're almost identical, except that this one has pycnogenol in it, which was to calm and soothe the skin. But this one has Centella Asiatica in it, which will also calm and soothe the skin. So just kind of swapping out the soothing ingredient. This one does have lactobacillus ferment, mushroom extract, and things that are supposed to be good for the microbiome. So as a replacement for the sensitive skin cleanser from Derma E, I would go with either the Derma E Pure Biome Balancing Cleanser or the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Soothing Milk Cleanser. And then the last discontinued product that I want to talk about in this video is the Chanel Ultra Latint Velvet Foundation. If you recall, this was my holy grail foundation years and years ago, and then it was reformulated. The reformulation was great, and then the reformulation was discontinued. And I just found out that this is back for some reason. It's back and you can get it mainly on the Chanel website, which doesn't make me feel like it's gonna be back forever. Cause I did look on Nordstrom, I looked on Macy's. Nordstrom only has it in, I wanna say three shades. Macy ha Macy's only has it in one or two shades. So I'm not 100% sure, but if this was your holy grail and you've missed it since it's been gone, then definitely check out the Chanel website. All right, let's move on to something new. The something new that I have to share with you today is an eye cream. Now, before you guys fall off your chairs and spit out your coffee, <laughs> let me just explain my deal with eye creams. I have never recommended a dedicated eye cream in the 10 years that I've been talking skincare and anti-aging here on YouTube. I'm not against them existing on the planet, but what I've always told you about them is that if you're using the most effective ingredients in your regular skincare, you can just put them around your eyes and they will benefit your eye area. I just always felt like you get half as much for twice the amount of money and there's nothing special in it. They don't tend to contain really the heavy hitter ingredients that I love using around my eyes that have really made a huge difference in my eyes over the last 10 years. And if you listen to a lot of influencers these days, they will tell you not to use anything around your eyes because the skin is way too delicate and it can't handle it. And I would, of course, beg to differ. I think that since the eye area does have that thinner, delicate skin that does show the signs of aging faster and first, that that really is where we need the heavy hitters 
of anti-aging. The problem with them is that they can cause irritation. And so in order to use them around your eye area, you really have to be careful when you're applying them and you have to ease in slowly with them like you do with anti-aging ingredients on any other part of your face. But nevertheless, the number one question that I get when I put out a skincare routine or when I'm talking to new people about skincare is, well, what can I use under my eyes? What eye cream do you recommend? Or I watched your skincare routine. I noticed you don't have an eye cream. What gives? But all that said, there is a new eye cream that I am actually psyched about because it actually contains the strongest ingredient, the number one thing that is the gold standard of anti-aging, prescription tretinoin. And that is the new agency eye formula. As you guys know, I'm an ambassador for agency. So this portion of the video is sponsored by agency. And I'm so psyched about this, not necessarily for myself, because of course I already use a much, much stronger concentration of tretinoin and I do use it under my eyes, but I'm psyched about this for people who have never been able to use their face tretinoin under their eyes or people who don't use tretinoin but want to use a really effective eye cream that is actually going to make a difference in your fine lines and wrinkles. When I started using tretinoin under my eyes, I didn't put it directly under my eyes for an entire year. That's how long it took to get my under eye skin to acclimate properly without getting irritation. And in the first year, it reduced my wrinkles by 10%. Within three years, it reduced my wrinkles under my eyes by 50%. And now that we're 10 years in, it's reduced my wrinkles under my eyes by like 90%. They are not etched in. And that's the difference that tretinoin can make using it under your eyes. Human nature is to go in, you know, guns a-blazing, whole hog, slathering on a ton of it every night. And that is not how to approach the strongest anti-aging ingredients that we have because they can be irritating. So you need to ease in with them slowly. And rather than trying to not put something stronger under your eyes for an entire year and hoping that your skin acclimates, I think this is a much better way to go because the eye formula will give you a nice, gentle starter dose of tretinoin to use around your eyes so that you can actually put this on like once a week, twice a week, three times a week, and then your agency provider can gradually step up the amount of tretinoin in there as your eye area gets used to using tretinoin without irritation. And of course, agency matches you up one-on-one -on -one with a dermatology provider who will recommend what goes into your eye formula. And you might have tretinoin in it. In my case, it's at 0.002%, so very, very gentle, very mild. It also contains 1% dexpanthenol, which is pro-vitamin B5 that's in there to help to hydrate and soothe the skin. It also contains 2% green tea extract. Green tea is an antioxidant, so it helps to fight free radicals in your skin, and it can also help to fade discoloration. And it also contains caffeine at 1%, which is an antioxidant that can help to slow down the signs of aging. The other thing that I at least want from an eye cream is I want it to feel super hydrating and super creamy and moisturizing. And this one does. I love the feel of this cream. It's got that super emollient feeling like you put this on and it doesn't feel greasy, but it feels like it's going to just lock the moisture into your eye area. When I wake up in the morning, my under eye skin is gonna be baby smooth and baby soft. So really loving the new eye formula. So if you wanna check it out and look into any of the formulas, whether it's the future formula or the eye formula or the dark spot formula, which I also use, then click the link in the info box below the video to get started. All right, there are a couple of new moisturizers that I wanted to talk about. The first one is from Maylove. This is their Hydro Relief Peptide and Amino Acid Cream. I had run out of my Olay Regenerist Ultra Rich Cream, and so I reached for this because this also contains niacinamide, it's got glycerin and hyaluronic acid, and in addition to that, it does have rice peptides. It doesn't have like the matrixyl peptides like the Olay does, but it does have peptides in it. And then this has a lot more oils in it. It's got jojoba oil and avocado oil, and it's got squalane and shea butter. And this is just such a rich, lovely cream, but it doesn't feel heavy and it doesn't feel greasy. It's got that same feeling that I was just describing with 
the uh, agency eye formula that you put it on and you know that you're gonna still be able to feel it on your skin in the morning. Like it creates almost like an occlusive barrier, but not in a greasy, heavy way. But in the morning when you feel your skin, it's like, oh yeah, it hasn't just evaporated along with all the water in my skin overnight. It really holds to the surface of your skin and really keeps your skin hydrated all night. So this was a really happy find and this has really been lovely to use as the last step in my nighttime skincare routine. Another new product that I'm really excited about is this sunscreen lip gloss from Naked Sundays. So I mentioned before that I'm doing my sunscreen testing and they have a sunscreen that I wanted to test this year so I bought it but in order to get the free shipping, like you had to add a couple more dollars. And so I saw this and was like, okay, I'll get that. This is an SPF 50 lip gloss and I'm wearing it today and it's really pretty. It's not sticky. It doesn't really have a huge amount of color to it, but it feels really nice on the lips. And this is like a watermelon. It actually tastes good. And the smell of watermelon, it smells so good and so fresh. And so a product like this that gives you a nice glossy shine that you can even use to like top up your lipstick, but that gives you that SPF coverage. I just thought it was genius. I really, really like it. I've been using it nonstop. It's non-drying. So really loving this, just kind of bought it as an impulse purchase to get the free shipping, but I'm, I'm really liking it. So I wanted to share that with you. Then I wanted to share a new concealer that just released a couple of days ago, and it's from one of my favorite face product brands, and that is from Say, and they released this new Say Slip Tint Concealer. So I've been trying these out over the last week. I really like this concealer. I like it as like a face concealer. I like it as an under eye concealer. I haven't tested it against my Lancome Ultra Wear Concealer. That's my holy grail. And I have some other concealers in a box over here from Sephora that I wanna try, and I think I'm gonna do like a head-to-head -head against my holy grail video to see how they stack up. So I'm not giving this the 100% run out and buy it yet, but I do really like it. It's pigmented, it's very hydrating feeling, and it lasts all day. It is very luminous. It does need a little setting powder for me, but everything does, um, but so far so good. And then for the last item in this video, I just wanted to give my A506 brush, my concealer brush, since we are talking about concealer, a shameless plug because this has been out of stock for so long and these just came back in stock last week. A lot of people have been wanting this. I've been getting so many questions. When's it coming back? When's it coming back? It is finally here. So I just wanna let you guys know that these are back in stock. If you wanted to pick any up, you can use the link in the info box below the video. I think I can also link it here on the screen. And you can also use my 10% off code, Angie10, over at BK Beauty to grab that one. That is my Kitten Paw Concealer Brush. It is so soft and so lovely, and it works great with the Say Concealer, my Lancome Concealer, just about any concealer. It's really just like a combination of the softness and the fluffiness of this brush that just lays down concealer so seamlessly, so smoothly, you know, like it never leaves any streak marks, it never leaves it patchy or weird looking. And then another BK brush that just restocked that I love is the 109. This is like the in-between version between my concealer brush and their 101 foundation brush, which is the bigger one, but this is perfect for just doing, you know, like your nose or your chin or a little bit of concealer here and there. You can also use my 10% off code for that brush and for all the brushes, whether it's my travel brush set, my full brush set, BK 101 brush. So that's the last thing I had to share in today's video. So that is gonna do it for this one. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody, bye-bye.